1848, the eagle trembled. New and revolutionary forces are suddenly unleashed. Student protests and demonstrations by a starving and resentful population lead to traditional ideas of monarchy and government being questioned throughout Europe. When the Hungarian nationalists took to the barricades in Vienna, the young Franz Josef of Austria ordered his troops to crush the rebellion. Death. Josef Shandor, insurrection, raising barricades, death. Men died in their thousands. Hundreds were shot, hundreds were executed. And those leaders who escaped were hanged in effigy. As blood ran in the streets of Vienna, the emperor and his court waltzed beneath the glittering chandelier. straightforward my son will ask you to dance with him and then we will all retire into the small withdrawing room my parents as well of course everyone will be staring at you i'm afraid but you'll have to get used to that you can't blame people for being curious about their future empress no ma'am i'm sure you'll make a very favorable impression you look very charming thank you the future of Austria depended on Franz Josef. And now, it's time, I think. His mother, the Archduchess Sophie, had arranged a marriage with the Bavarian princess, Helena of Wittelsbach, and a great ball was held to celebrate their betrothal. The destiny of the Habsburg dynasty was to be decided that night. Franz Josef was unable to resist the gentle charms of Helena's younger sister, Elizabeth. They danced the evening away, and his infatuation deepened with every waltz. There is nothing to be discussed. We will ignore what happened this evening, and I forbid you to mention the subject again. I'm afraid that's not possible. Not possible? Of course it's possible. You'll do as I say, Franz. You will forget this evening's disaster and stop behaving like a lovesick stable boy. I didn't realize you knew any. <laughs> of course, the girl is attractive. I can see that. Oh, Franz, see, if you want to go to bed with her, then do so. But you'll marry Helena. Well, I couldn't say no, could I? He couldn't stop looking at you at dinner yesterday. Everyone saw that. But I didn't think it meant anything. Oh, Cece, for heaven's sake. I didn't, really. Just because you look like a child, there's no need to pretend to be one. It's the truth. Yes, perhaps it is. Perhaps you really are as stupid as you pretend to be. Helena is strong. You need her strength. How do you know what I need? I am talking about the needs of your country, the needs of Europe. Country's future depends on the Emperor's marriage. Well, Sissy will learn. <laughs> oh, Sissy. You don't even know her. A romantic, daydreaming child, poetry spouting like a father, weak and unstable. That's nonsense, Mother. <laughs> Besides, she's your cousin. So is Helena. The papal dispensation was specific. You are to marry Helena. What if I refuse? Well, I'm not permitted. Haven't I always given you good advice? Haven't you always relied on my judgment? Well, perhaps I was mistaken. The strength you have, you get from me. It was I who made your father renounce his claim to the throne. It was I and I alone who made you emperor. Well, then why give me power if I'm not allowed to exercise it? I gave you power to fight. Well, haven't I done that? <laughs> Well, you frightened a few Hungarian peasants, not a notable victory. Why are you so afraid? There's no real reason why you should prevent me from marrying Sissy unless you're afraid of her. 
Yes, I am. Why? I'm afraid of her weakness. I'm afraid of her immaturity. Well, just because she's young? Oh, it's too dangerous. It's too much of a risk. You may think the Hungarian troubles are over, but I don't believe it. The whole of Europe is blackened by revolution. If we're not constantly alert, we'll find ourselves destroyed by these rebels. Oh, mother, the taste of power is on their lips. They're not going to stop now. You will have to be stronger, more alert. You'll need someone like Helena beside you. She's a woman. She has strength of character. She's a woman, not a child. She's like me. Believe me, Francie, I'm speaking the truth. You need to marry Helena. I expect you to speak to Aunt Ludovica tomorrow morning. Tell her I wish to marry Elizabeth. The marriage shall be next spring. April, perhaps. There shall be a royal progress down the Danube. When the people see her, they will love her. Nothing could have been more idyllic. A handsome young emperor and his beautiful bride. To the cheering onlookers, it must have seemed as if a fairy tale had suddenly sprung to life in their midst. But Elizabeth was scarcely more than a child, 16 years old and a stranger to all physical passions. It was a fairy tale that was soon to turn sour. expecting you. Go away and leave me alone. Perhaps uh, your majesty would like some fruit. I don't want anything. But your majesty, the archduchess herself is waiting. Well then let her wait. Let her wait. Let me help you dress. Go away. Please, go away. Poor child. Go away and leave me alone. Sissy, my mother's expecting you. Please, get dressed and come to breakfast. Franz, I can't. Why? I don't feel well. You must. I shall tell mother that you'll be ready in half an hour. I told her she's coming. What? Sissy, she's coming. No, Franz, she's not. What? Oh, never mind. The child can't be curbed. Madame. Count Moilat. Oh, I am so very pleased to see you. And I am most honored that you should have sent for me, madame. No, no, don't be so formal, please. You are now my empress. Oh, you are still my teacher. Come, sit down. How is my father? He is well, madame. And mama? Yes, she is well, too. And the horses? How are the horses? The horses, madame. The horses are in excellent spirits. <laughs> are they being properly exercised? Oh, yes, indeed they are. <sighs> And my sister, how is Helena? She is well too, madame. Is she happy? Yes, I believe so. I often think of our walks by the Starnberger See. Oh. Seems like a different world, so distant. Nothing has changed, madame. The lake is as beautiful as ever. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it is. And I often think of our long talks, 
of what you taught me. I am most flattered. But it's curious. What used to be a history lesson is now a dinner table conversation. See how the countries of Europe are clustered together. It's Austria, the German states, and my fatherland, Hungary. Where are we? Oh, Cece. Your sister knows. Show us, Helena. There. Good. That is Bavaria. How small it looks. As the years go by, so the fortunes of these countries change. As one becomes stronger, another becomes weaker. But why? I mean, why can't a strong country remain strong always? Because strength in itself is a great danger. The very fact that Austria is as strong as she is today means she has many enemies. No man wishes to be dominated by another. People become angry and resentful. That is why the Hungarians tried to seize power for themselves. They resented being just part of the Austrian Empire. When was this? In 1848, when you were a child. When you left Hungary? Yes. We had no choice. Our very lives were in danger. But it was your own fault, surely. You shouldn't have started fighting. What else could they do? They wanted their freedom again. Freedom? Yes, your sister's right. We wanted freedom. The sort of freedom you enjoy and take for granted. Sometimes I wish I'd listened harder, learnt more. There is so much I don't understand. That is scarcely surprising. And so I want our lessons to continue. Madame? I want you to tell me more. More? About what? Well, about Hungary, of course. But why especially that? Because I'm interested. I want to know. It's almost a forbidden subject here, you know. Oh, yes. My mother-in-law, the Archduchess, thinks all Hungarians are godless rebels. She breathes fire whenever they're mentioned. Then perhaps it would be wiser not to risk her displeasure. Why shouldn't I? I'm not afraid of her. Well, not much, anyway. <laughs> but why are you interested in my country? Why? Well, why do I love Chopin and not Mozart? Why do I love Heine? And Shakespeare. You can't explain such things, can you? It's just a response, a reaction. Besides, it's your fault, Count Moylat. You inspired my imagination. Ask yourself why you love Hungary. Your answer will be mine. Perhaps I was mistaken. Perhaps I shouldn't have spoken as I did. No, no, you mustn't think that. Besides, there's something more. Do you remember talking to me one day about freedom? You said it was something that I merely accepted and took for granted. Did I? Yes. One day when we were riding, I remember it well. comes a time, like today, when change of some sort is almost inevitable. Like the countries of Europe are moving on, step forward. Where to? Only the future can tell us that. But if we don't know where we're going, why move at all? Well, it's part of the pattern of human nature. It's like your father telling his musicians, you've played that long enough, let me hear something new. Oh, my father doesn't want change, I'm sure of that. Maybe he doesn't. But there are other men, and many of them, who would like to see the world become a very different place people you mean peasants not only them poor people rich people men and women all over Europe even here in Bavaria even here there is discontent in my country too in Hungary there are people who hate the Austrian rule they believe that Hungarians should have a much stronger voice in their own government that is the change they would like to see then they should ask the Emperor well, they tried but he refused to listen which created much anger and bitterness you were right Everything you said was true. I see that now all too clearly. I see it because I am no longer free. I tell you these things because you are my friend. And perhaps you shouldn't. Are you afraid? For you, madame, not for myself. For me? Yes, for you. If the emperor knew. It's these rooms, you see. My life. 
I'm imprisoned by the life I lead. The least I can do is try to understand my fellow prisoners. Once I loved the idea of Hungary, now I want to understand. I spend my days writing poetry. There's nothing else to do. It isn't very good, I'm afraid, but perhaps it will explain how I feel. Oh, that I had not left the way that would to freedom me have led. Oh, that I had not gone astray on vanity's broad path instead. What's that you're reading? Oh, it's nothing important. Sounded very pessimistic. I brought you a little present. I thought you were alone. Count Moilat is a very dear friend. Your Highness. We'll talk later. Your Majesty. He was my teacher, my tutor at Possenhof. Why is he here? I sent for him. Why? I thought that my lesson should continue. What lesson? History. I've always been interested in history. <laughs> well, there was no need to send to Possenhofen. He's a friend. He's a Hungarian. I do not wish to see him here again. If you wish to know more about history, then I will tell you all you need to know. Besides, I see no reason for future lessons. The days are so long. I can't even go riding. Now that you're pregnant, Sissy dear, you must rest as much as possible. I'm so bored. When your son is born, you will have plenty to do. I never see Franz Joseph from the time I get up until the time I go to bed. Why can't I go with him to Vienna? Well, you can't go running after your husband like a subaltern's wife. There's no one to talk to. Well, you were not forced to marry my son. Quite the contrary. You spend far too much time looking at those parrots. If a pregnant woman is always looking at animals, her children are apt to resemble them. Austria does not want a crown prince that looks like a parrot. Now in a prison cell I wake. The hands are bound that once were free. The longing grows that naught can slake. And freedom thou hast turned from me. Why didn't you call her Ludovica? Well, everyone assumed that she would be called Sophie, and that was that. Besides, I was in disgrace. Disgrace? For giving birth to a daughter and not a son. But now that I'm pregnant again, hopes are beginning to rise. I'm a brood man, Nene. That's my function. That's what I'm here for. Oh, what nonsense. It's true. I'm not even allowed to nurse my own baby. The great Sophie whisks her away whenever she gets the chance. I think she's afraid I might corrupt her or something. Corrupt her how? I'm learning Hungarian, the language. I'm learning to speak Hungarian. Her royal mightiness disapproves most strongly, but I don't care anymore. I've stopped worrying. Somebody once called her the only man in the Imperial Palace. Did you know that? Well, it's true. The shadow of the palace deepened across her path. The young empress was haunted by a strange, undefined fear. More than a fear of the archduchess. More than a fear of loneliness. It was a fear of the unseen, the unknown, a fear of the future. I'm beginning to believe those old stories of the Habsburg ghost. I feel its presence very near sometimes. The white lady. I feel her robes brush my face like cobwebs in a barn. Her moans echo in my ears. A shadow of her sadness fills every room. Oh, Nene, what is to become of me? I mustn't talk like this. Why not? 
Aren't I allowed to speak my mind? So many things are denied me. No riding because of the unborn child. No dancing. I must stay here while the Empress spins around a ballroom or rides off with the army. That's all he really cares for. His work, his women, and the army. That's his life. A daughter? Yes. Ha, ha, ha! I thought that would please you. <laughs> very much, very, very much. <laughs> I am most grateful to you, Count, my lad, for having come all this way. I was afraid you might think it unwise. Unwise? To return to Hungary, to come to the house of such a notorious patriot. Oh, no. I never listened to gossip, Count Andrasi. Ah, but you should. I'm one of those few men alive who's actually been hanged. In effigy, I'm glad to see. <laughs> Another daughter. <laughs> Franz Joseph Masik, the Almighty, is fighting on our side. <laughs> oh, perhaps he is. Yes. I believe in fate, you know. I believe man always gets his just reward. Good for good, kindness for kindness. Evil for evil. God help Austria. Her future must be very dark indeed. Yes, I think yeah. she'd like that. Better. Sweeter. Yes, <laughs> yes I think so. <laughs> Hello. Ross. Hello, Gisela. Hello. Hello. Hello, what's the matter? Come on. I'll take it. Why didn't you tell us oh, you were coming? We would have had tea together. Well, I thought you'd like to know. It's been decided that we shall visit Hungary. When? Soon, sometime in early May. Oh, that's wonderful. I thought they were against it. Who? The ministers, I thought they wanted to keep you away from Hungary. Yeah, well, they changed their minds. Oh. And the idea is that we should make the Hungarians realise that they are part of the Austrian Empire. Encourage feelings of patriotism and so on. Oh, Baron Bach hopes you'll be able to charm them as you charm the Italians. If you can't, nobody can. <laughs> Does your mother approve? Well, not entirely. She doesn't disapprove. Franz, will there be some conciliation? What? With the Hungarians. Why should there be? Well, Hungary is nothing more than a province. They must learn to accept that. Well, then why are we going? Well, policy. What policy? Well, to ease the situation. What situation? Look, I've been discussing it all day. Do we have to discuss it now? Well, I want to know. Well, there's still plenty of troublemakers in Hungary. We can't afford to ignore them. So the children had better stay here. With your mother? Yes. Why? Well, why not? We'll be travelling right across the country. Well, they can stay in Budapest. Why can't they stay here? Because I want them to come with us. There's no point in antagonising my mother. <sighs> she spends most of her time antagonising me. They haven't been well. They shouldn't travel. Then I shall stay here with them. All right. We'll take them with us, if you insist. Where are you going? I have an appointment. Franz? What? Please don't go. I feel so alone. I thought you preferred it. To what? To my company. I never said so. But you implied it often enough. When? Look, I'm too tired to argue. But not too tired for your women! Why did you marry me, Franz? To get a son, was that it? Was that the only reason? 
Poor France, you should have obeyed your mother. You should have married Helena. Perhaps you're tired of me. Perhaps you'd like me to go away. Perhaps you'd rather be by yourself, with your mother. Or with somebody else. You know that isn't true. Do I? Of course. I know nothing, nothing at all. I've told you often enough. Told me what? Look, I must go. Told me what? You shut yourself away from me like you shut yourself away from the world. You sit at your desk day after day after day. If only you try to understand me a little. And not just me. People. What they fear and want and feel. All right, sissy. What do you feel? Afraid. Of what? I don't know. Afraid of what? I don't know. Many things. I can't explain. Oh, Sissy. I was standing by a window this morning. One of the gardeners looked up and saw me. He was young, handsome, I suppose. He didn't move. He didn't turn away. I wondered what he was thinking. Perhaps he hates us. Why should he? Why shouldn't he? Oh, France, I'm so lonely. But I love you, Sissy. Surely you know that. For my whole life. You and the children. And Austria and your mother. And the Habsburgs and the Empire and the army. I am what I am. Nothing can change that. Not even you. I must go to the children. I'll tell them we're visiting Hungary. They'll be so excited. Bach was right. We have charm. Those dangerous Hungarians. I was joking. What happened between Austria and Hungary in 1848 changed my whole life. I shall never forget it. I can't. It is beautiful, though. And exciting. Don't you think it's beautiful? Yes, it is. I always knew I'd love Hungary, but I never thought I'd feel like this. It's like coming home. Baby. Oh, 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 my little girl. Oh, 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 oh. I think we should go indoors. Not yet. 
There's a breeze coming up. You don't want to catch a chill. Sissy, you should go indoors. All right, in a minute. An illness could harm the baby. Do you want to lose another child? Do you get some strange pleasure from tormenting me? What? You can't let an hour go past without telling me what to do or what not to do. It's my duty. Your duty? You're little more than a child. I will not be deprived of my freedom. I was giving advice. You were giving an order. Sensible advice. And I will not be given orders like a scullery maid. It's getting far too cool out here. You know how much I enjoy sitting on the terrace. You would do well to take my advice. Elizabeth, look at Hungary. Hungary? If you'd done what I said and left the children here. How dare you say that? How dare you? You must hate me very much. Let's go indoors. the very sight of me. I am too tired for this sort of argument. Oh, yes. That's what France always says. To keep me quiet. No, I don't hate you. In fact, I've tried to like you. But failed. No, not entirely. You have a certain strength, independence. The trouble is you've got too much imagination. Is that so very wrong? Makes you unsafe. Unsafe? We are like a castle under siege. It will take an iron determination to survive. I have it and France, but not you, Elizabeth. How do you know? Of course I know. Look at your passion for hunger. I'm interested in the people, that's all. The country. Well, you shouldn't be. Why not? You should be interested only in Austria, the Empire, and the continuation of the Habsburg line. That should be your passion, your sole purpose for living. As it is yours? Yes. No matter what suffering may follow. That is the price. We shall pay it. We? You married my son. You are the empress. You have no choice. No freedom? None. And I suppose you regard this as your strength? I do. There are other points of view. Indeed, there are. But they must be ignored. The vultures of revolution are circling over Europe. If you are content to have them pluck out your heart, that's your concern. But they shall never prey on Austria. The empire must be preserved at all cost. I have ordered my faithful and brave army to put an end to the hostile acts which have been committed by the state of Sardinia against my Italian provinces. I appreciate the full bearing of this measure. And if my duties as a monarch have ever weighed heavily upon me, it is assuredly now. But an armed enemy is on the frontier. An armed enemy who, in alliance with the Revolutionary Party, openly announces his intention of obtaining possession of the Austrian dependencies in Italy. To your sons, whom I have taken into my army, I, their commander, send my martial salute. You can look on them with pride. For thanks to them, the Austrian eagle will take a lofty sweep. For God and the Father. Angel, Sissy. Let me tell you once again how much I love you and how I long for you and the dear children. I pray that all is well with you and that you are looking after yourself carefully as you promised me. 
Do try to find as much distraction as possible. Above all, preserve your precious health. I beg you in the name of your love for me to show yourself in the city often and to visit institutions. You do not know what a help you could be to me if you would do this. It will raise the spirits of people in Vienna and maintain the good atmosphere which I so urgently need. Take care of yourself for my sake, for I have so many worries. I had to give the orders to retreat. I rode to Vallejo through a violent storm and from there to Villafranca, where I spent a terrible evening amidst men, fugitives, carriages and horses. I am richer by many experiences and have learned what it feels like to be a defeated general. My only ray of consolation and hope now is that I am coming back to you, my angel. You can imagine how happy it makes me. Your most faithful France. You've uh, heard about the Austrian defeat? Yes. Weakened the Emperor? Oh, yes. Quite considerably. Oh, yes, it'll clip the eagle's wing somewhat. Mm. I'm anxious to know what you think of him. Who? The Emperor. Oh, Franz Joseph? Uh huh. Hard ass. Huh? That's what his staff call him. Did you know that? He's always sitting at his desk, you see. Oh. Hard ass. <laughs> I've never had the pleasure of meeting him. Oh, I thought you had. No, just the Empress and the Archduchess. A man who's met Sophie and lived to tell the tale. Very briefly. Are they happy, the Emperor and his wife? Yes, I think so. In spite of his women. You've heard about his affairs. Yes. They say she loves Hungary. Yes, she does. They say she loves our country almost as much as her own, perhaps even more. Yes, perhaps. And the Emperor, does he love her? Yes, I think so. Yes. I'm told he'll do almost anything to please her. She has only to ask and it is granted. But uh, apart from wanting to meet you, my dear Count, my love, my friends and I were wondering if you might be able to help us. Help you? In what way? It's a confidential matter. I'm sure I can rely on your discretion. Of course. Of course. Uh, a cigar. No, thank you. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Quite simply, we are interested in the possibility of self-government. Hungarian self-government. We think effort should be made towards a re-establishment of Hungary as a sovereign state. And you want my help? In one respect only. What's that? Your former pupil, the Empress. Oh, she is ill. She can do nothing. She recover. She loves Hungary. The Emperor loves her. Do you see what I mean? Oh, yes. It shouldn't be too difficult to find a way. What do you think? Well, the Empress will listen to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to this high-level intrigue. You're afraid? I'm afraid that the fighting will start all over again. More people will die, and we will end up in a position far worse than we are now. How can that be? Austria's power is absolute. She has taken her freedom. Uh, she can take no more. Perhaps we should wait. Wait for what? Well, things could get better. Things can only get worse. Have you forgotten the Empress' brutality? Have you forgotten the thousands who have been killed, the thousands imprisoned, husbands deprived of their wives, the children made orphans, the Habsburg throne is stained in our blood, the empire is based on death, cannot survive. And there's another point to be considered. If we do not act now, then others will. Commoners, 
peasants, workers, Jews. Their patience is exhausted. The revolution in France has taught them that even kings can be overthrown. If power is to remain in the right hands, our hands, then it is we who must make the first move. I used to enjoy being ill when I was a child. A blazing fire would be lit in my room. And my father would sit on my bed and tell me stories. I was happy then. But childhood doesn't last, madame. It does for some people. It should have done for me. Is there anything I can do to make you feel more comfortable? No, thank you. Shall I read to you? That would make me sadder still. In books, people live happily. Oh, come now, madame. You are surrounded by love and affection. And hatred. The Archduchess rejoices in my illness. She sends her servants to spy on me. Did you know that? It's a lovely day. Wouldn't you like to sit by the window? Even the flowers seem faded this year. No, there's nothing you can do. Thank you, Hildegard. Oh, I nearly forgot, madame. Your sister is here. Where? Paying her respects to the Archduchess. Well, tell her I'm asleep. I can't do that, madame. Why not? I said you'd be pleased to see her. You had no right to do that. No, madame. None at all. No, madame, I'm sorry. What shall I tell her, then? You can tell her what you like. Tell her I'm asleep. You can tell her anything. How are you, Cece? Oh, get out. How are you? Isn't it obvious? I think you're looking much better. My face is swollen and disfigured. Oh, just a little, perhaps. You're saying prayers in the churches? Yes. You know what that means. Oh, it means nothing, Cece. You'll soon be well again. The children are looking very well. Are they? <sighs> I hardly ever see them. The Emperor must be very worried about you. He's no cause to be. I've fulfilled my duty after all. The brood mare has delivered a son. My function is complete. What do the doctors say? They stare at me, prod me with their scrubbed fingers, look grave, stroke their beards. They say it's sadness. Sadness? Melancholia. That's what the doctors say. Are they right? Who knows? I don't know why you should be unhappy. Don't you? Well, the Emperor loves you. Everyone knows that. Oh, I suppose he does in his way. He says he does. He writes long letters when he's away. But it means very little. How do you know? Because I know. He says much, but feels little. He's a hollow man. Any real passion he has comes from Sophie. She controls him absolutely. But Sophie won't live forever. Neither will I. You're behaving like a spoiled child, Cece. What do you mean? What I say. You've never been satisfied with anything in the whole of your life. That's just not true. Even as a child, you'd run away from reality if it didn't please you. All those daydreams and fairy tales, and now this illness. It's the same thing. It's a weakness of the spirit, not of the body. How dare you say that, Nene? You're not prepared to fight for anything. This would never have happened if I'd married Franz Josef. I have more strength. I wouldn't surrender to Sophie. I've been invited to stay for luncheon. I'll come and see you before I leave. Well, if you must worry, worry about something more important than your wife's imagined illness. All right, Mother. What should I worry about? Prussia. Prussia? Think what would happen if Prussia were to control the whole of Germany. And Hungary. 
Prussia might support the rebels in Hungary. For God's sake, Mother, you spent most of your life looking for storms. Well, I must. One moment of weakness could destroy us all. No, Mother, I must. After all, I am the Emperor. <laughs> to be gained from making things worse. I don't know what you mean. That headdress or whatever it's called. Everybody knows it's Hungarian. Surely I can wear what I choose. My mother thinks you've deliberately humiliated her. Let her think what she likes. How good to see you. Your Majesty. I'm delighted to see that you are now fully recovered. Thank you. But I didn't know you were in Vienna. Have you been here long? No, only for a few days, Your Majesty. I'm here with a friend, Count Julius Andrasi. I speak very little, I'm afraid. It is a great compliment, Majesty, that you should have learned Hungarian. I find it a very beautiful language. And it is a further compliment that you should wear your hair in the Hungarian fashion. Thank you, Count Andrashi. I hope that we may soon have the honor of receiving your majesty in Budapest. Oh, yes, indeed. I hope so, too. Many of us feel that a strong bond of friendship could be established between your majesty and Hungary. <laughs> and with the emperor, too, no doubt. Of course, if such a thing is possible. Well, why shouldn't it be? Friendship is something that grows of its own free will, ma'am. It cannot be forced. <laughs> Goodbye, Count Moyle. Your Majesty. people in the streets tonight, especially at the Opera House. They applauded your mother. They cheered me. If you follow your mother's advice, Faust, you'll lose the affection of those people. Without her, the Empire would have crumbled. You mustn't let your feelings My interfere. My feelings aren't important. It's what she is that matters, what she represents. Don't ignore her strength, Sissy. We need that. A strength that's based on fear. The fear she inspires in others and her own fear of change and progress. Fear can only destroy. All right. I'll talk to her. Talking isn't enough. You don't realize how dangerous she is. 
more can I do? Besides, she won't listen. She never listens to anyone. Whatever she says is bound to be right. She's been right in the past. The past means nothing. It's dead. Let her die with it. How can I? Be reasonable. I don't care about reason. Not anymore. Why should I? I won't be smothered by the past. I won't let her destroy me. Thank you.